Hi, this is John Lynch. I've been requested to do a tutorial for line and ink effect. So this is how I do it. First of all, I normally start with uh, Google and I then look for a suitable source image, which in this instance I would tend to find in Wikimedia Commons because they're copyright free. So we'll just have a look and see what we can find. All we do is in the search bar, put in Wikimedia Commons CC0 and then a name for the type of content that you're looking for. In this instance, I've typed in the word Hacienda. So I'll just see if I can find one. This looks like a suitable image. Nice clear sky. So we'll try this one. This is the key thing. What we must do now is ensure that this actual image is copyright free. So where you see the download section, if we click on that, it will tell you in here, attribution is not legally required. So this license is a Creative Commons license zero, which means it can be used for personal use and for commercial use, but you do not have to give the name of the author. So that's the type I use. So let's just download this one. Full resolution, obviously to get the best quality. And as you'll be able to see, the quality is really good. So right click. And then we'll save the image with the name it has on Google onto the desktop. And save, there we go. Close that down now. We just wait until it's uh, finished downloading. It's fine. There's the image that we're looking for, the Hacienda. So the first thing I would normally do would I convert this to an HDR image. And I'd use Photomatics for that because it will accept single JPEGs. But what we'll do is we'll put it into PaintShop Pro. And we go to File, HDR, and Exposure Merge. Now we're not merging any exposures because we only have the one. This is the reason why I use Photomatics because it will render an HDR image from a single JPEG or a single RAW. So here we are. It's now found the picture. We just click on process and then we're given a range of presets that we can uh, have a look at. quite a big image of this so it's taken quite a while to load into the HDR section but let's have a look this one looks okay nice bright image we'll try that one too bright still too bright Yeah, that looks okay. We'll stick with default two. So we'll just, again, simply just process. Just bear with me while the computer sorts itself out.
and now we can go to edit and carry out all the necessary adjustments right now that we're in the edit module the first thing I'll do is replace the sky so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sky with the magic wand tool set to non-contiguous so it will choose everything of this colour because it's set to RGB value the colour scale so as you can see it's selected everything even the blue in between the trees and the branches so that's my selection made now what I would normally do is I would look for a suitable sky which I've already done and it's loaded in so I would copy that image into the memory and now I'm going to paste it into the selection and there's the new sky okay so now I can close that selection down select none and now I'll show you how to create the line in ink. First thing we do is we take the background layer and then we duplicate it. So duplicate layer and we're working on the top layer, the one which is highlighted in blue. And now we go to the effects menu and we're looking for artistic effects. There we are and down here we'll find glowing edges so what we've got here now is a negative image with all the edges highlighted and with a certain level of intensity and a certain level of sharpness sharpness I usually have set to 100% and the intensity three if I put this on the full size image then you'll see the difference just one small adjustment can make so there we have the image if we increase that to four you can see the difference bring it back to three again I find this is probably the most suitable setting to get more realism okay now we click OK so we now have a negative image with colour in there so what we're going to do is remove the colour so we go to adjust down to hue and saturation and then on to vibrancy and make sure the slider is set to zero which in this instance it is so we click on OK so we now have a black and white negative image to turn it into a positive image where we want black lines on a white background then we go to image and negative image so we now have black on white which is what we're after okay so this is our top layer <clears throat> we're going to blend that now with the background layer so we'll go for the blend mode which is currently set to normal I'm going to change this to darken and there you have your line and ink drawn so if you're happy with that then we just simply go to layers merge merge all and we now have one composite layer normally I'd run this through sharpless and that would just uh, sharpen up all the, the smaller details again but that would do for the time being
That's it, folks. Any questions, post them in the group. Thanks for watching.